All right, we're going to begin. Thank you very much. It was, it was difficult enough calming down the crowd initially, let alone when you have a glass of uh, champagne now, but that's, uh, let's try to get settled. It's my distinct pleasure now to introduce uh, Dr. Sarah Ruth from the National Science Foundation, NCAR sponsor. Sarah is the section head for the NCAR and facilities section in the Division of Atmospheric and Geospace Science at NSF. So, Sarah? Thank you, Jim. I've promised Warren and I won't go on for too long, <laughs> which I think is always good advice in these occasions. So, good evening to all of you. Um, I'm delighted and truly honored to represent the National Science Foundation at this um, very, very special event, the rededication of this building, the NCAR Mesa Laboratory, in its, incredibly, its 50th year. 50 years ago, representatives from my organization, the National Science Foundation, the National Science Board, NCAR, the University Corporation for Atmospheric Research, the City of Boulder, the State of Colorado, and of course, the building's architect, Ian Pei, gathered to dedicate this incredible building. And we were just going through some files at work because we're moving to another office and we found the original 50-year-old dedication brochure. So, so we've been passing this around the office and just touching it. It could not have been more timely. We had no idea we had it. This is the official government copy, so I should be holding on to it for another 50 years. The Mesa Laboratory represents a commitment to both the practice and to the wonder of science. We're going to overuse the word icon, and I was trying not to, but there really is no other word. It is a true architectural icon, symbolizing the pledge that was made more than 50 years ago, um, directly from the Blue Book, if, for people who are familiar with that, to mount an attack on the fundamental atmospheric problems on a scale commensurate with their global nature and importance. So from the beginning, they were thinking big. This, of course, was a time of great advances in science and technology. With the founding of NCAR in 1960, NSF and the research community had made a shared commitment, and there's no other word, to revolutionize atmospheric science. They recognized that, again from the Blue Book, to bring to bear on the problems of the atmosphere the full competence of the scientific community would take a, nas a concerted national effort. And at its core should be a national institute that would bring together scientists from many different disciplines and would also provide highly sophisticated tools and novel technologies such as aircraft and supercomputers that were at that time and largely still are beyond the reach of individual universities. And if we wrote that now, I think we would use very similar language and we would have the same aspiration. As Walter Orr Roberts, the first NCAR director, said back in 1961, a national laboratory will help answer a growing national and world need to understand more profoundly and more comprehensively the basic processes of the atmosphere in which man lives. For while we live on the earth, we live in the air. And uh, this national center would need a building that would match both the scale and the ambition of this vision. In 1961, that building moved closer to reality when the Colorado State Legislature purchased this stunning parcel of land and donated it to NSF. With heartfelt appreciation, Alan Waterman, NSF's first director, who was also a trustee of UCAR, issued a statement declaring, this gift from the people of the state of Colorado to the National Center for Atmospheric Research is, in larger terms, a gift to the scientists of the United States. It is both an investment and an expression of confidence in the nation's future. NCAR and UCAR rose admirably to the challenge presented by this landscape, selecting Ian Pei, who then was one and still is one of the nation's most innovative and exciting architects to design this new building. Pei came to know this land intimately. He hiked all throughout the day, picnicked, camped, and watched the changing sunlight on the foothills around us. His goal was to create a structure that was both bold enough to live up to the immensity of this setting and yet was in complete harmony with it. And I think we can agree that he realized this goal brilliantly. Henry Horton, the first chairman of UCAR, said at the dedication of the Mesa Laboratory, this magnificent building that we dedicate today 
is tangible evidence of a national commitment to the search for a more complete understanding of our often fickle atmospheric environment to the ultimate benefit of all mankind. Since then, NCAR's progress on the atmospheric, uh, impact on the progress of the atmospheric sciences has been profound. Here are just a few highlights. In the early 60s, NCAR launched a lecture and seminar series for recent postgraduates. This became the advanced study program, which brings postdocs to NCAR and is a cornerstone of NSF's work to advance STEM education and to educate the next generation of scientists in the geosciences. A good many of the current leaders in our field began their careers as ASP postdocs. The 1960s also saw the opening of NCAR's aviation research facility. NCAR's aircraft have played a critical role in field projects throughout the world that have dramatically advanced our understanding of weather patterns, cloud microphysics, atmospheric chemistry, and other essential atmospheric processes. The most recent of these, our G5 aircraft, is one of the most advanced airborne platform research platforms in the world. In the 1970s, NCAR's Roland Madden worked here with Paul Julian to discover the Madden-Julian oscillation, the sequence of atmospheric waves in the tropical Pacific that influence weather and climate systems worldwide. That same decade, we took delivery here of the Cray-1A supercomputer, which at the time offered more memory and faster processing than any computer in the world. The Cheyenne com supercomputer, which was dedicated last week at the NCAR Wyoming Supercomputing Center, continues that great legacy today, supporting now thousands of users every year throughout the geoscience community. In the 1980s, Raymond Robel of the High Altitude Observatory helped to develop the thermospheric general circulation model, which was used to conduct the first computer simulation of a solar storm's effects on the Earth's upper atmosphere. By the 90s, we were seeing the development of NCAR's GPS drop sond, which has played a critical role in measuring remote regions of the atmosphere and improving our ability to forecast hurricanes. By the 2000s, the Weather Forecasting and Research Model, or WARF, had become and remains the most widely used weather model in the world. Meanwhile, the Community Earth System Model has become an indispensable tool for scientists, leading to almost weekly new and important insights into the Earth's climate. Along the way, NCAR and its partners throughout the community have made landmark discoveries that help safeguard society. These include laying the groundwork for protecting aircraft from potentially deadly microbursts, dramatically improving weather forecasts, projecting future climate conditions for vulnerable communities, predicting streamflow conditions and floods across the country, and predicting wildfire behavior. This work has been instrumental in protecting us from natural disasters while strengthening our economy and our national security. In closing, let me quote from Leland Hayworth, director of the National Science Foundation 50 years ago. At the dedication of the Mesa Lab, he said, we have met here in a beautiful building, which I certainly do not need to tell you. It is one of the most effective homes for an institution of this sort that I have ever seen. I think we can all agree that these words are still true today. I'm sure I'm not alone in recalling the first time I came to Boulder as a young postdoc, seeing the Mesa Laboratory and thinking, something truly special must happen here. I'm equally sure that 50 years from now, at the 100th anniversary of the Mesa Lab, our successors will still be awestruck by the beauty of this building and the incredible science being conducted and enabled within its walls. It is now my great pleasure to unveil a representation of the brass plaque that will be manufactured after our celebration today and which will be permanently placed here to mark this rededication of the Mesa Lab. It, it reads, originally dedicated... <laughs> 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 Originally dedicated on 9th of May, 1967. We didn't rehearse this, I think you can probably tell. Uh, this historic anniversary marks 50 years of scientific innovation and collaboration. Science, too, should have its cathedrals. Thank you. Thank you very much, Sarah. In my notes, it said you were going to lift this off, so say I... <laughs> I'm just doing what NSF tells me to do, right? So. so thank you very, very much, Sarah, for those very well-chosen words. Now, I would like for all of you to raise a glass.
Toast the Mesa Laboratory. It's rich and wonderful history, but just as importantly to its next 50 years. Thank you very much.